Hi guys, this is uh, Sandy Joe from Rhinestone Templates or from um, um, the t-shirt shop and I um, just figured out how to do some um, tackle twill, I'm going to call it, or tackle stitch applique and I'm using, I have a Melco machine which is an awesome machine and I'm working with Design Shop Pro Volume 9 and I just wanted to share that with you if anybody else was having some issues. I've been looking for easy way how to do this for a long time and instead of having to go through and having to trace around each letter to put uh, a um, lay down stitch, a tack down stitch and then the tackle line stitch and going around and doing it with the nodes like this there is an easier way and um, you can adjust your stitches for the lay down and for the tack down then your cover stitch is going to be the tackle um, tackle stitch and um, I've, sh I've gone through this and figured out how to do it so it's really really easy and I'm just going to go ahead and jump in and if anybody has any questions or I'll just send me an email and I'll try to to help you figure it out. Um, the first thing that I did was I brought in a vector and my vector is just fonts and it just says Bemidji which is the town that I'm from and this was what I was testing on because I wanted to make some um, sweatshirts for um, our town with the with the twill and with the tackle stitch over the top of it um, but so what I've done is I brought it in as a vector and then I went ahead and I set it to stitch and it really doesn't matter what this stitch is like because I'm not really going to use this I'm going to use either applique <coughs> excuse me fabric or twill fabric and I'm going to eliminate these stitches when I'm all done but we need to keep these stitches over here in place in order to work on this we can't delete them and, and um, still achieve the same thing that we're going to do. Um, but um, I'm going to go ahead and go to my properties here so you can see where I'm at. And you can see on the top stitching, I'm just leaving all this stuff right where it's at and um, just going through it and seeing I just I'm leaving everything exactly where it's at right now um, and I'll come through and I'll change this stuff later on once we get some of these lay down and cover stitches and stuff set but right now I'm just leaving everything just as they are so I'm gonna go ahead and <coughs> get out of that excuse me I have a little bit of a sinus stuff going on here but um, let's go ahead and let's work with the B and to work with the B um, I'll just go ahead and I select it over here and I'm gonna bring us in um, zoom us in here with the the plus button up on the top toolbar and your your setup here might look a little bit different than what mine is I'm running an older version um, but it's uh it's the um, like I said the design shop pro volume 9 a lot of people are running 10 I haven't upgraded to that I'm still using number 9 but let's just go ahead and go with this B and the first thing we want with an applique twill stitch um, is we want to have our lay down stitch so we can cut out on our cutter this B out of any fabric that we want to use. If you're using um, a twill that does not have the sticky backing, which I always use the sticky backing, and I cut that on my vinyl cutters, um, you can use fabric and you can use um, the heat and bond light on the back of it and then you're going to have to spray it just a little bit on the back to make it stick to your where your B is. So we want to make an outline of this B so that we can set that B that we cut out on our cutter exactly in place. You can cut it out by hand if you want to like applique but if we have a cutter you know that works great. If you have a Cameo or any of the other cutters they work great for doing this. So the first thing we want to do is do our lay down stitch and then we want to do our tack down stitch. Our tack down stitch is what we put the stitch after we've done our lay down then we play our fabric down and then we do our tack down stitch so it can hold that fabric down when we do our twill stitch so um, we've got three stitches that we're gonna do so underneath the B when we're done over here there's gonna be three more um, little things here that tell us what kind of stitches that we're running so I'm gonna take you through this and we'll go fast and we'll back back out again or go to other letters so you can see how easy this actually is so we've got the B highlighted over here so all we have to do is go to our left hand side now over here on the left on my setup I've got my um, walking stitches and then I've got my single line stitches and we're going to use the walking and we're going to use a single line and what I did for this I don't know if it's the right way to do it but what I did and it worked for me was have this highlighted have the B highlighted from over on your right hand side 
and come over to your B, hit your shift key, and then I want a walking stitch because I'm going to put that walking stitch and I'm just going to leave it as a normal stitch um, right here. So I'm just going to leave it normal and I'm going to leave the stitch length at about 20. And I'm going to release my um, release my, my shift key and just hit enter. And once I hit enter over here on our um, little area that we can see what everything actually is, you can see under my B now, I've got an outline of a B, I've got the inside part here of the B, and then I've got this part of the B down through here. And I like to have these stitches, as Nate said in one of his tutorials, I like to have these stitches color coded. So when I go to bring them up on my machine after I've loaded it, I know exactly what is my what is my stitch that I have for my um my lay down stitch, what is my stitch that I have for my cover stitch. So all my stitches are going to be color coded. So my first stitch is that I always put in a bright green. So I'm going to go ahead and put um, those in a bright green. And so it's not the same color as what my other stitches are going to be. And you can see right now, you can see my stitch around here, and that's going to be my lay down stitch. So that's just going to be my um, stitch that is around the B and it went on the inside of the letters and it went on the outside perfect. Well I'm going to come back over and I'm going to do that again because I also need my tack down stitch. So I'm going to select my B again and I'm going to hit, you could, you could duplicate these things if you want but it's just easier to do it like this. I, d I highlighted my B, came over to the, went to my shift key on my keyboard, hit this and now it gave me another set of exactly what is down here. Again, I'm going to go ahead over here to this B and I'm going to color code this and I'm going to make this a hot pink. And I'm going to do this um, with all of them here. I'm just going to go ahead and make those hot pink and let's just see where those other ones ran off to. Let's just see where they are. Okay, that actually that's come came in as um, just the B for that one for the cover stitch. So I'm gonna make sure and hit this area here in the middle, and um, I am going to let's go to that one, and I am that's the one down below, and I'm gonna go ahead and actually duplicate that, and I'm gonna make that hot pink. And I'm going to move those up when I'm done here. And then this one is this right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate that as well. And make that hot pink. Okay, so now let's go ahead and bring these all together up here. And I have the pink actually laying underneath my green and how I really want this to be in order is I'm going to want, I always lay my green down first and then my pink. So I'm going to go ahead and move these guys up. And you just um, take your mouse to drag these up. Just take your mouse and hold it down and then push them on up. So now I've got these the way I want them to be um, and I've got it in the area now you can see that my pink is laying over the top of my um, my B here and that's exactly how I want it to be so we're good with that I don't want the green on the top because when I set this to my machine this is my lay down stitch this is my tack down stitch and now we're gonna come through and put on here I'll select the B and now we're gonna come on and we're gonna select the tackle twill. I have a good friend who is awesome awesome with embroidery and she actually suggests using the zigzag stitch so play around and see what works best for you but again I selected my B I'm coming over to shift and now we're gonna come down over here in our stitches over here and that's gonna bring up um, that's going to bring up our stitches over here and you bring down your um, stitch type and you could go with a zigzag if you want or you can just go with your tackle. Now when you select tackle you can see that it shows up 
on the top here, which is great. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to release that. And I'm going to hit enter just to make sure that everything is OK. And now you can see that I've got my tackle, my tackle, my tackle. And I'm going to leave those in black. They're going to be different than my lay down, different than my tack down. So those are going to be my actual cover stitches. So I'm going to leave that at that. But I am going to come in and I'm going to adjust my tackle up on the top here for the size. Because it comes in on my machine, it comes in as a default of at 20. And I really, I like a bigger tackle stitch. So I'm going to go to 36. I don't know, or 37. I don't know if that's the right number or not. Like I said, I'm just learning too. And I'm just playing. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and put that in there. I go back in to my little insides and I do the same thing because they're all set at 20. So let's go to 37 and leave that. And then go in and do the top one and go to 37. Now at this point, I sent this tester, um, I did this whole, the whole thing, and I sent the tester off to um, my embroidery machine, and what I did then was, um, uh, first of all, what I did was I got rid of the B, I, any of the letters that are solid here, the stuff that's in the middle, we don't want that. So um, I went ahead and I deleted that and this is what you're left with. I've got a lay down stitch, I've got a cover stitch, and I've got a tack down stitch. So this is all that we need for what we need to do. But <coughs> excuse me, when we go over to the machine, um, then you need to put your applique stops in so it pushes your um, hoop out to you and so you can lay down your letter where you need it to be or if you're cutting you'll put more applique stops in so that you can actually put it down bring it out, cut it off. But if you're cutting your letters on your vinyl cutter or your engravers, then you can go ahead and just do one stop. After you've done your lay down stitch, then do an applique stop in our machine underneath the color settings. When we set our colors, there's an applique. It'll push the machine out to us. And then um, we can lay that, that um, piece of twill or cloth right over this right here that's been cut on our cutter and then we hit our green button and it goes back in and then it comes around and does our tack down stitch right through here which would be the pink one and then it will lay the twill right over the top. If you're doing an applique that isn't pre-cut you're going to want to stop it after the um, lay down stitch and then you're going to want to stop it after the tack down stitch so you can trim up around it before you put down your actual the twill stitch right there. So. Um, I hope that helps you guys and you can use this as long as you have bring in a vector file and bring it set it to embroidery. I think this is going to work on anything that we want to have it work on. So I'm going to keep playing and I just hope this helped you guys. Um, again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, I'm going to share this with a few of my friends. I think I'll throw it up on YouTube in case it can help anybody too. Um, I'm not sure if I can post the videos in the Melcro groups or not, but um, I, and again, I don't know if this is the right way, but this is an easy way for me to do it instead of trying to set everything out and doing an outline and the whole thing. So this is Sandy Jo, um, Rhinestone Templates, the t-shirt shop. Um, if you have any questions at all, just give me a buzz on Facebook or um, an email if you want or any of the groups or whatever. But hope this help you guys, helps you guys too because I know I my creativity right now is going like, oh boy, why I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And this is going to open up a lot of different things. One more thing, if you have anything that looks a little funky, you know, in your edges here, you can go into your property bar. Um, I deleted that B. But you can, let's go backwards. Um, you can go into your property bars with any of this stuff and you can adjust your corners. So work with your corners, your miter corners or your smoothing or if you want cap corners, um, the angles and stuff like that. So you can work with those corners and make them cleaner and make them look a little bit nicer. I had to do that on the M and some of the other letters um, when I was working on that. But um, anyway, again, I hope this helps you guys and have an awesome day and until next time, see ya.